Hey everyone, Mark Sadeski here. So, we're back at Amesbury, Massachusetts, back at the Pow Wow River. I guess that means we have another slow shutter app to review. Let's go ahead and take a look. So the app we're going to test out is called Spectre. It's made by the same people who brought you the Halide camera app, which is a great camera app, by the way. Um, Spectre is a long exposure simulating uh, camera app, much like what Slow Shutter Cam and Camera Plus can do. The only difference is that Spectre uses computational photography uh, it uses uh, some custom AI to do something that is very unique, and that is that you're able to do long exposure photography handheld. It's able to do its own stabilization, and the results are pretty pretty cool. Um, my hands are still not the steadiest, even with you know all the AI help in the world. So we're still going to use a tripod for these photos, but today we are going to test it out on some waterfalls, uh, the upper and lower part of the Pow Wow River and the Pow Wow Falls, and we're going to see how it measures up. Is the long exposure capability good? Uh, let's find out. Alright, once again we are in my photo app. I'm gonna move to the Spectre app. And let's use the zoom. I am going to set it to nine seconds. And then this is me personally. I like to go and turn off the live photo. I'm not a big fan of live photo. And I am just going to make a little adjustment here to the brightness level. The lighting is not very even with the sun coming up. And I am going to hit the shutter button and start the exposure. And that's it. We have our photo. It's nice and sharp. The blur is great. As a quick aside, I actually did try this app handheld, and I gotta say, I am really, really impressed with the results. I am horrible at keeping my hand steady, and this app was able to stabilize pretty well. And I think these photos that I took, it's just a couple examples, but I think they show how awesome the AI on this app is and how well it could keep things steady. So that was the Upper Falls, and we got a really good blur from it. Um, the, the, the detail was great, the, the, the waterfall blur was nice, the things that were stationary stayed stationary, and in good detail too. But again, like every test we do, we're going to go to an area that's a little bit more harder to photograph. Um, the waterfall up here was nice and even. The waterfall just a little ways down, uh, downstream a bit is much rougher. And this time of year, it's, well, it's a little bit of a deluge. It's, uh, the, the volume is really high, which isn't typically ideal for good photography. But for the purposes of testing, 
It'll do. It'll do just fine. What do I think of the app? Well, it's a good app and I highly recommend buying it. If you're a landscape photographer that is looking to explore new areas, you could just go out with your phone and being able, you know, be able to just do some quick shots of waterfalls handheld and be fine. And then come back with your DSLR camera later and do your business um, the image quality is great and I have very little complaints but I do have just a few and so my first complaint is that there's no pinch to zoom feature and I think I get that because the the camera app is supposed to be able to be used handheld so it's only able to do it at fixed focal lengths so basically if you have uh, an iPhone with just the wide-angle lens you're only able to use your wide-angle lens if you have the telephoto lens like the like I have with the iPhone XS well then you can use the wide-angle or telephoto uh, but that's it no pinch to zoom none of that which it's kind of a bummer. Not a deal breaker, but a little bit of a bummer. A little bit of a bummer. The other issue is the file sizes. Uh, Camera Plus and Slow Shutter Cam allow you to save large format files like PNG and TIFF files. You can't do RAW because of the nature of the photography. These are simulated long exposures. They're not actual long exposures. So I get that you can't do raw, raw saving, but the other apps allow you to save larger file formats, which is kind of cool and allows you as close to raw as possible. You can't do that with Spectre. And maybe that's gonna come in a future patch, who knows? And lastly, you're only able to do three different timings, uh, three second exposure, five second exposure, and nine second exposure and I get probably why they did that because you are able to use this handheld and there's only so long that you could hold it handheld I'd still like to have a longer exposure time uh, maybe up to 30 seconds there are some days where it's really sunny outside and you want to get that shot the blur is not cooperating because of the crimping involved uh, with, with, with the bright sun and the now ideally you shouldn't be taking it in bright sunlight anyway but still having the option for a longer exposure would be nice but again those are st stuff that could come in later updates the, the folks over at Spectre and Halide have done a tremendous job at maintaining their camera apps they're very passionate about their uh, technology very passionate about photography and so that's really cool back when this app launched uh, there was a blurring issue so if you listen to the tiny shutter podcast you would know that we all complained about the blurriness of the photos I had no idea that this was just a bug and not something that you know not something else so they fixed it a few days later, and that's awesome. So it shows that they're just really dedicated to making this app the best that it can be. And as a very first launch of this app, as a, as a whatever you want to call it, the version one, I'd say it's pretty good. And again, if I'm out somewhere and I don't have my tripod with me, this is the app to use because I can't hand hold on slow shutter cam or camera plus 
That's just not going to be possible, especially with these hands. So this is a must have for anybody who does this kind of photography. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Go ahead, like, subscribe, info about contacts and social media. It's all below. The gear that I used is in the description. Go ahead and check out our audio podcast that can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, or any other place podcasts are found. And if you're so inclined, go ahead and help us out in our Patreon. It helps us get new gear to test, and it helps us uh, with making this video and podcast much better. So if you're able to, it'd be very appreciated. If not, that's okay too. So anyway, that's all for this week. Have a great one. Bye-bye.